Its eyesight may be less evolved than large life on Earth. So using sonar could be a more accurate means of locating objects around it, like Leo and Ike. Splotches of bioluminescence cover the creature's back. Astrobiologists could call this creature the arrow tongue. The arrow tongue determines the probes pose no threat and turns its attentions elsewhere. The gyro sprinter is a two-legged vegetarian about twice the size of an African antelope. Arrow tongue reveals itself as an ambush predator, capable of great bursts of speed. As predator and prey hit speeds of 40 miles per hour, the probes are left in the dust. Ike launches a camera disc to follow the action. The arrow tongue commands the road like a semi-truck. The gyro sprinter corners on a dime. Night falls on Darwin IV. Scattered bands of bioluminescence rake the surface, like some kind of alien landscape lighting. Possibly it's a form of communication on Darwin IV. But Ike and Leo ignore the light show and push on towards their prime objective. Their first priority is to scour the landing site for Balboa, the lost probe, to confirm its fate. The Darwin mission now depends on just two intrepid probes with the intelligence of preschoolers. Images of the Balboa and of large life forms taken by Ike and Leo are evaluated by the Von Braun. Its supercomputers now make important adjustments in the programming of the two probes. The probes are directed to split up. Leo will hunt for Darwin's larger creatures, while Ike explores ecosystems and life forms that resemble plants. As Leo's quest begins, he flies over a geothermal vent. Here, he'll top off his gas bag with some hydrogen from the mist. But even during a pit stop, a good probe keeps exploring. Life on Darwin IV never stops either. In the midst of this volcanic cauldron, Leo finds microorganisms that resemble some found in hot springs on Earth. Leo looks for big game, his twin probe, Ike, explores a small, isolated forest. The floor is covered with stickball plants, part sponge, part virus. Giant molds called Darwin tomatoes rise from the dense soil. Then Ike's sensors 
suddenly direct him skyward. Called trunk suckers, they cling to these plaque bark trees, sucking nourishment from the nutrient rich layers just beneath the tough outer shingles. It's here that the mission reaches another milestone. After seeing life everywhere, Ike gets his first glimpse of death on Darwin IV. But death from what? The arrow tongue is a very, again, interesting organism. It has a lot of similarities to some of our dinosaurs. It doesn't have the maneuverability uh, uh, of some of its prey items. A formidable high-speed predator. It's an ambush predator. It appears to sneak up on its, on its prey and, and then take them down quickly. Very high efficiency predator, very highly evolved, very interesting animal. Gyrosprinter is a very improbable animal when we look at animals on Earth. This is an animal that needed to get away from predators, was running in a loping manner, beat things out 100 million years earlier. Its predator got faster, it got faster. And Tavilla develop, developed this amazing sense of balance, the large feet for gripping and uh, handling on the turf. Looking at the shoulder girdle and the, the hip girdle, it appears that this animal may have evolved from a four-legged animal. It appears we have a fusion here of the forelimbs, a fusion of the hind limbs. Truly extraordinary, something we would never predict from life on Earth. One of the things about the plants on Darwin IV is that superficially they seem kind of bizarre. And yet when we look at plants on Earth, we find that there's a lot of really bizarre plants on Earth too. It's just that they're not common. One of the things that we might ask about a plaque bark tree is, first of all, is it transporting nutrients and water? And we're guessing that it is. But we might also ask, where does it transport them? And we didn't tell the probes to go checking. But we can learn about this from looking at the behaviors of the trunk suckers. They're very similar to some sorts of birds, woodpeckers, that we have here on Earth. They fly, they land on the trunk of the tree, they prop themselves up with their tail, and they're taking fluid from the, from the tree. This tells us some things about the trunk suckers, where they're getting their energy, but it also is informative about the plants and what they're doing. So trunk suckers are informative about both plants and animals. Next, a herd of phantoms stampede across Darwin IV and Leo attempts contact with a grouchy alien. On an alien planet, Ike has discovered forest creatures dead from unknown causes. Meanwhile, a sonic ping ends a conversation and Leo goes offline on Darwin IV. If you look at the diversity of what species look like on this planet, uh, uh, nature has come up with better things than our best uh, science fiction uh, artists and, and people try to conceive what a foreign species would look like. Uh, some of these uh, things that come out of the deep ocean uh, just are, are absolutely amazing creatures. Just the diversity from the same starting materials of DNA and genes by mixing and matching these almost any physical appearance as possible. For the past three days, the Darwin Reconnaissance Orbiters tracked a large object moving rapidly across the surface. Leo has been ordered to investigate what mission scientists call an object of interest. As it turns out, the object of interest is not an object at all. It's a bunch of them. Leo locks onto a herd of creatures called unts. 